Hey everyone, Rob here, and it is July 6th, 2023. We are still experiencing earthquakes here in Reykjavik, Iceland, and around the whole Reykjavik, Reykjanes Peninsula area. We can see from the news here, this is headlines today, you can see it was just about know, two hours ago they sort of posted this, and they said that the lava will probably flow towards Reykjanesbreit, which is the main highway which connects Reykjavik to the airport, and they're saying even over if an eruption occurs between Kjellir and Fagradsfelt, where it is now considered most likely that the magma will reach the surface. And this is what uh, Armin Hörkunsson, a volcanologist, uh, volcanologist sorry, at the University of Iceland's Institute of Earth Sciences. And according to him, it would probably take several months, to be honest, for the lava to flow over Reykjansbreit, over this main road. And that's if the eruption is similar to the ones that we saw in 2021 and 2022. But he said, if it is more powerful, then it's possible that the lava would reach this road in just a few days. So he says the calculation is based on the power of the eruption, which is difficult to predict in advance, as we all know. And this would be revealed as soon as the eruption began. There has been some preparatory work for the construction of dikes and, and other sort of barricades to try and control the lava um, as soon as the flow has already become. They just have to wait and see as soon as the fissure opens and it starts to erupt, if it erupts, uh, what they're going to do. And they're, of course, going to react accordingly because they do want to protect this road at all costs. Well, I don't know about all costs, but this is a very major artery for the people in Reykjavik to be able to get to the airport. There's a second path that you can take. Uh, but it's quite the detour going around the sort of backside of the volcano. But they are seeing a ton of you know, land movement and, and deformations and things like that. So uh, they're definitely going to be taking a look at everything when it erupts. But they say if it does erupt in an area called Elvort, which the, be a danger around the Blue Lagoon and Svartsengi. So if it erupts further there, um, that's obviously a danger. And then other areas like the power plants are in great danger if it comes uh, in Reykjanestan. But if it comes up in Moldhalsdal or the Brennestein Fjell, uh, then the suburbs of Hapenfjell will also sort of be kind of in this difficult situation because as we all know where this, I mean, we can just look it up on a map real quick. Uh, if we jump open to Google Maps, we can see exactly kind of this area where the the uh, eruption is looking to take place. If we sort of type in Blue Lagoon and zoom in, we can see here's where the Blue Lagoon is. And the eruption, the old, old eruption, uh, you can see it was not too far from the Blue Lagoon. It's, and uh, what they're saying now is it's going to be a little bit north of this. And so if it does, we can see Hapnefjöder is up here in the corner here. This number 41, this is the main road. So what they don't want, or I mean, ideally what they don't want is for the eruption to be on this more northern side and then spilling over this road here. You can see this is the main artery from the airport up until... Reykjavik so this is definitely it but as I said there is a secondary road here along the bottom that people can take to go around that uh, and there is a way to do it of course not ideal but this is the sort of location Hapnefjell here is the sort of furthest settlement large settlement towards the airport before you hit to these smaller towns uh, but this is what we're talking about here now if we go over to some of the images that's been released uh, from the meteorological office here in Iceland, we can see here a series of graphs, uh, which were all from July 5th. And this is in Krusevik, and they're saying the earthquake swarm on the Reykjanes Peninsula, of course, is continuing with over 1,300 earthquakes detected since midnight on July 6th. So that was, uh, you know, 12 hours ago or so. And since the beginning of the swarm on July 4th, the total number of earthquakes exceeds 4,700. Now, it's been a bit of a downward trend today on terms of what we can feel here in Iceland or sorry, Reykjavik or Reykjavik Peninsula. There haven't been quite as many large earthquakes that I've felt throughout the day, but they have said that there are still from midnight 
uh, over six earthquakes exceeding a magnitude of 3.5. And of course, when they're that strong, we can feel them all throughout the city. Uh, so there's the graphs here. You can see the north in millimeters, the east in millimeters, and then the up in millimeters. And this is the deformation of the land in Krusevik. And then we have Fagros Felt, the same thing. You can see here, looking at this bottom part here, we can see April, May, June, July. We can see the deformation is really starting to go up. If we go back to Krusevik, we can also see a trend going up in all this deformation. So they're saying, while the earthquake swarm is ongoing, the main hazard is strong seismic ground motion due to the largest earthquakes in sequence and potential triggered earthquakes on nearby faults. Now, the largest earthquakes in the swarm have caused localized rock falls, so people are advised, again, <laughs> against walking close to rock cliffs, steep slopes in the area around Kalia, Fagresfeld, and Klevervat, which is a very popular area. Again, down here, a lot of people traveling towards the lava fields. Uh, that have occurred from the previous eruptions. So moving on uh, back to these these graphs here. So th these are showing data from the GPS stations at Fagrefels and and Klevavat. Well, we'll get to that one in a second. <laughs> and uh, sorry, Krustevik. Uh, and it's located just south of the activity. Um, and then the Krustevik one is about eight kilometers southeast of it. So the blue lines you can see here very thin blue line it's the beginning of the intrusions while the red lines show the beginning of the eruptions we can see here so they're pretty close close together on both of these and they're going back uh, to last august you can see there so if we're looking at that um the station in Krusevik, so this one here that we're looking at and it shows a greater than 30 millimeter displacement to the southeast reflecting magma being introduced into the upper part of the crust. If we're looking at the other image here, in fact it's felt one, located just south of the activity shows a mixture of signals due to the vicinity of the uh, to the activity. The entries are similar to the lead up to the August 2022 eruption except the northern component of the Fagros Felt 1 here, which shows north, but not southward movement, reflecting that the magma is north of the station, but it was south in 2022. So that's a little bit of where they're getting some of this information. Last thing I want to show you is this image right here, which just came out today, is a Cosmo SkyMed interferogram covering the period from June 28th to July 6th, 2023. Now, this has been really blowing up all over social media, uh, especially here in Iceland, because this is really showing you what's going on here. This wrapped image clearly shows a series of multicolored fringes centered between Fagrasvat and Kalir. Now, these fringes show ground deformation caused by the new dike intrusion, which started on July 4th, 2023. The maximum observed deformation related to this dike intrusion is up to 18 centimeters in the satellite's line of sight in the northwest direction. Now, although the deformation signal extends over a large area of the western Reykjanes Peninsula, this does not mean that there is magma beneath this entire region. They wanted to stress that. The magma intrusion is situated be between Fagrosvet and Kalir. So there's you can see here, Fagrosfeld here, Kelly here, the main road is here, and then all this black in the corner is the city. And then the airport, of course, is here. So we can see here, Blue Lagoon is, is just a little bit over to the, to the left of all of this. So, um, yeah, so it's, a, it's situated between there, no indication of additional magma movements outside of this area. Several small line, uh, ligaments are also visible in the interferogram. I hope I'm saying that correctly, which cut across the fringes, and these represent fault movements or earthquakes that were triggered during the dike propagation. So we can see here, this is definitely a very interesting uh, piece of data, again, from uh, Vedrstova Eastlands, which is the meteorological office. They're providing all this stuff. And if we go one last time, well, we will, I'm sure, visit this again. But if we go back to the information here we can see over the last 48 hours all of these green stars which as if you've seen this before you know are an indication of an earthquake of magnitude greater than three 
we can see here the chart which is going through the time and then the intensity of each of the earthquakes and the numbers they're all plotted all of these circles are a different earthquake in this region and then of course you have the visual representation of the circles here and where they're located if we go to the table and we can see all the earthquakes made to three and long and larger uh, we just had a couple stronger ones not too long ago and we can see that seven just after seven o'clock or so so 4.2 five o'clock 4.0 and then just after nine it was 3.3 it was a bit of a smaller one but it has been a bit of a more quiet day uh you have not we have not seen too many uh over four uh today just uh, just a couple here so that's it there's a bit of a longer video there's a lot to go through it's uh yeah these are very interesting images Hopefully it doesn't go over this main road because there's a lot of people coming to Iceland and uh, you know people like me We would like being able to very easily uh, access the airport. So that's it long video tons to go through Always going to keep you updated with the latest information uh, as it happens today As I said was a bit of a slower day with regards to earthquakes So decided to just wait to the end of the day to sum up everything that has happened over the last 24 hours so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, be sure to put in some comments if you know uh, a little bit more of them, missing some information, saying something wrong. Throw it all in there. It's always good to learn more from everyone watching. So until next time, thank you so much.